confusing long world. <laughs> Harrison Ford and Blade Runner, the 1982 futuristic thriller based on what the year is supposed to look like in 2019, where everything is controlled by steel and microchips. And basically, this movie is a cult classic. Like, looking at it now, it still has a style that's very unique. Ridley Scott is very good with visuals. So the visual of this works to perfection. Um, for the timepiece of 1982, when they filmed this, this looked great. You know, this came, like, in between Star Wars phenomenon with Harrison Ford. And his Indiana Jones is getting ready to start. Blade Runner comes in and just burns. And it's like a it's like a crime thriller. But Harrison Ford is like a detective who's hunting down these replicas who were created to like assist humans, but they've been declassified and they're trying to hide and pass off as humans as they try to survive. And they've been Asked to be hunted down by Harrison Ford, who's known as Rick Prickett. And Rector Howard plays the bad guy as he only could play. <laughs> There's no way he could play a good guy. Uh, except for when he was the blind swordsman. Yeah, Blind Fury. He loved that one. Uh, Sean Young, uh, Edward James Olmos, Daryl Hannah was in here. She played the love interest of Rector Hour, and she's also, and she was also a uh, uh, what they call a replica. They're stronger. They're more powerful than humans, but their life expectancy is, you know, they're dying off. And this one, he was a special, you know, Rector Hour, the evil one. Uh, what you would call evil, and you find out he's not really evil. He just wants to survive. You know, they've been basically hunted down for extermination, and the Blade Runner, that's what they call them, hunts them down and kills them. It was a real basic plot. Uh, I had a lot of drawbacks with the film. Harrison Ford should never narrate a film ever again. Because he's the narrator in this film, and the crawl in the, the in the beginning, the crawl is just, oh my goodness, it's just too much to read. It goes too fast, and you're basically explain the movie right then and there. <laughs> it's like okay, uh, man hunts down <laughs> replicas, must kill them. Okay, and then it becomes like a an old time crime mystery. Like this film could have been done in black and white, but it's just done in the future. And, you know, that by far is the only drawback. But what you see is the humanity in Rucker Howard's character at the end. I think that's what, like, saying that there was a lot more to them. And it's like all these things I've seen, I like, and it's all gonna go to waste. You know, I've seen things that people wouldn't believe, you know, and uh, and his whole thing is I'm like, man, I wanted to live. You know, that's my whole thing was to survive. He's the next to six. And it's all down the drain now, you know, so. It's one of those uh, it's one of those movies that, you know. I'm not going to say it's going to stand the test of time. It's just one of those guilty pleasure films. Because Blade Runner was good. I'll say it's... Uh, I'll say it's about... you either Like, some people really love the film. Like, they're like, oh, this is just excellent. I gave it three stars. I thought the action scenes could have been a lot better. Even in 1982... You know, uh, some of these scenes were a little cheesy with Rick Deckard and just choppy a little bit, I think. But as far as the overall look and everything around, that's Ridley Scott.
But it's one of those guilty pleasure films. And tomorrow or in a few hours, <laughs> whichever time you hear this video, you will get the new Blade Runner uh, movie review. As they did not give me a pass to see Blade Runner. Hmm, I wonder why. I'm out. I did say three stars. Okay, three out of four. Yeah, three stars. I'm out.